thanks to everyone for coming out this morning. This is a long-awaited event, it's the grand opening of Rocky Mountain's new business services center. As you know, the uh, facility, the office that was over in uh, City Hall was called the business services office. And we have a whole new center there so that we can provide a full range of service to our citizens have anything to do with, with bill paying and utilities and taxes. So uh, the city of Rocky Mountain acquired this building in February of 2015 simply because we had outgrown that previous space. Uh, we leased the facility to Southern Bank who had, who owned and had owned and uh, occupied it and they stayed here for the eight, for eight months. And then during that time period after we bought it, we were collecting rent from them until such time as they were prepared to fully vacate the building. And once they did, we used the rent that had been collected while they were occupying it, and used that money to renovate the building and make this great facility that you see here today. Uh, the new facility is over 15,500 square feet, and that is an increase of 5,000 square feet over the combined two facilities that we had been providing services out of before that being the City Hall and the Weaver Building. My fellow City Council members and I realized a long time ago that uh, we had outgrown that facility in terms of providing the services uh, that we were trying to, to get out of that building. If you came down here very much at all the first of the month, uh, you probably remember seeing the traffic lined up in the street where people were trying to get in and out to pay their bills, and so that became both a a nuisance, an inconvenience, and potentially a safety issue. We want to thank our former city manager, Charles Penny, who led the way in getting this initiative going. Um, thank you to city manager Rochelle Smaltoni, who came in and kept it going and directed the staff in bringing to fruition this project. Uh, and thank you particularly to finance director Amy Staten, as well as the entire staff of the finance department. I'd also like to thank a host of other city departments whose employees collaborated to get the new business center functioning and to get it ready for us today. Those departments include engineering, parks and recreation, energy resources, inspections, Rocky Mountain Fire Department, and a host of other individuals. Please join me in a round of applause to thank these people for their efforts. Now I would like to welcome to the podium City Manager Rochelle Smaltoni, who will provide some insight on the facility improvements. Rochelle. Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, this is my first time actually coming in the building, and what a delight it is to finally see it. Um, we've had a lot of conversation, as you can imagine, about what this would uh, be like. Um, I'm most proud of the fact that the um, the, the color scheme here is very close to Carolina blue, the real Carolina blue, <laughs> and not red. But, um, but anyway, um, I can tell you that um, we're very proud of the facility, uh, the fact that um, this doesn't leave a vacant building uh, in our midst of the downtown. It has been repurposed and repurposed for a really uh, good reason as uh, the council member just spoke about. But I do want to start out with a quote from uh, Helmut Schmidt. The German politician once stated that the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. And the city of Rocky Mount saw this need for improvement many, many years ago. To improve customer service, we needed more space. We also needed the right infrastructure in place. And this space was just the perfect fit. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, it's just, I'm just, just really um, overwhelmed with how much integration has happened here. And it's really because uh, not only for uh, our customers who come in, we certainly want them to be serviced in a very high quality way, but also to provide a great work environment. Uh, for the employees. I think that is equally important because when you have people who are working in comfortable places, then guess what? You know it. They're better workers and they deliver better customer service when they're not worrying about water dripping 
down from the ceiling on them or some friendly something running past their desk. <laughs> At that point, that's when I go home. <laughs> but anyway, um, this facility is in such close proximity to City Hall and it already had features in place that we will utilize, like you know, the drive-through that doesn't extend now out into the street and create danger. It's a secure place for taking payments and um, it was just call center ready. So again, it was just perfect. And all we needed to do was to modernize and improve the facility just a bit to create the best possible experience for our customers as well as our employees. These improvements have been in the form of an expanded parking lot to better accommodate customers and staff. The entire facility was recabled to improve technology offerings. An upgraded phone system was implemented. A generator was also installed, so we are always operational. Security enhancements include cameras, alarm systems, and access controls. Access control is a way of limiting or permitting access to certain areas of the building. The facility was also upgraded with LED lighting, energy efficiency, and an extended life are just a few of the benefits of having LED lighting. We are all very excited about this new upgraded facility. I hope our customers are excited too because we believe with these renovations and upgrades, the new business service center will serve us and you, our customers, for many, many, many years to come. Thank you and I hope that you will find this wonderful facility as useful as we think it will be. Thank you for helping us to celebrate the opening of this facility. I and my, my staff, we are truly thankful to be here and to serve our customers. Uh, it is my pleasure to talk to you about the layout and some of the other new features that we have here. So I'm going to sort of walk you through the building, if you will. Um, right behind you, of course, is cashiering. And what we've got that's new and better is we've enhanced the number of teller lines from four to six. Um, everyone before me has also talked about the drive-through and that has now gone from one to three. So no more lines extending out the parking lot and down through the intersection of Nash and Franklin. So we're really pleased and think that's a great enhancement. But also for us, just the configuration of the cashiering area means that they're all together and they can, this flexible enough that the tellers and the drive through can work together and work wherever they're needed. We actually didn't have that in the past. They were in two separate areas. So that's a great enhancement for us. Over here to my left is customer service. Um, you'll immediately notice, immediately notice that we've got a more spacious waiting area. It's more comfortable. Um, you'll also see at the front desk over here um, something else that's new. We've got uh, uh, some new technology that we put in place to help manage the, the lobby traffic. So we've got what we call SmartLine. In SmartLine, the customers come up to that front desk and they sign in to SmartLine. And what will happen is they can go take a seat and they can see up on a monitor um, their estimated wait time and their position in line as they sit there. Um, so if you don't have time to wait, you could also go online, and online you can see the estimated wait times, or better yet, make an appointment online. How nice is that? Um, so those are all new features for us, and in, in addition to that in customer service, we've also expanded the number of customer service offices we have. We've gone from four to three, so now we can actually move staff into that area whenever times are busy. So we've, we've got some extra capacity as well for that. Another new feature of the customer service is actually behind this wall in the corner here, there's an office, and that is our business hub. And the business hub is actually dedicated to our business customers who have unique needs. The business customers can also go up to the front desk, sign in to SmartLine, and they'll also see their position in line and estimated waiting, or they can make an appointment. Um, either way, but we'll have a dedicated office just for our business customers because they do have some different and unique needs. So we're happy to be able to serve them in that capacity. Next to the business hub, back here in this office, is our field services group. 
And that's a group that consists of meter readers and other personnel who help manage utility service orders. So um, they previously were actually in a separate building. So having them centralized here helps to make us more efficient because they're here where we can work with them on um, different orders or issues that come up. So we're ha they're an important piece of our team and we're just happy to have them all here under one roof. Behind me in this wall all the way to the end to my right is Collections and Collections is a group that helps customers with more specialized needs for utilities, taxes, or general bills. So those who see customers are here on the first floor and some nice private offices. On the second floor, we also have collections, and those folks that are in collections actually um, do some back office work, um, but they, they don't need to see customers. Also on the second floor and actually behind this wall where it says payments is our call center. Our call center has been enhanced with modern workstations and technology to help them to better manage the call volumes and activities. That group gets about 800 calls a day that they filled. It's a, it's a high volume call center. We've expanded the number of workstations there as well from eight to 10. We don't have more staff, but we have the flexibility to move customer service reps into the call center when call volumes are heavier. So we're really pleased to have that flexibility and to, to be able to, to manage the activity as it's needed. Um, the, the call center was also in a separate building, so having them here centralized helps us to have that flexibility. So we're pleased with that as well. Also on the second floor is our billing group. It's a small group of four people who generate about 1,700 bills a day. Um, they were also in a separate building, so having them here helps them to work through billing issues a lot more efficiently. And I, I don't want to forget that we also have on the second floor a nice break room and a training room. We want to make sure our staff is well trained and refreshed to best serve you. Um, so those are the, the key features that we have. I, you know, as, as you probably can see, I'm, I'm pretty proud of the facility. Um, my staff and I are really just thrilled with it. I, I can't say enough about it. Um, but I, I would like to thank there are many city staff members who have worked tirelessly getting the building ready. Um, also, I'd like to point out Latasha Hall. Latasha, raise your hand. Where's Latasha? Latasha is our business services manager, if you haven't met Latasha. Latasha has been instrumental in the renovations and the relocation efforts. So my thank you goes to Latasha as well. And she and her staff welcome you here and they're ready to serve you. Thank you, Amy. And now, um, before I introduce our next speaker, I would like to take a moment to introduce two of our assistant city managers. I see Chris, oh, and, and Tasha came in. Thank you very much. Um, let's see, Chris Bachelor is standing in the back with a blue shirt on, yes, and uh, Natasha Hampton Clayton just sat down here. So please welcome them. <laughs> and I expect that you had missed our mayor's attendance here. He is out of town and couldn't be with us. And so I'm standing in for him, I'm standing in for the Mayor Pro Tem who couldn't be here, and for our Council Member Rudman Blackwell who, in whose ward we are today. So now I'd like to introduce Bill Ferris, who is, um, David Ferris, excuse me, who is the um, CEO of the Rocky Mountain Chamber of Commerce. David. Thank you, Chris. I've been called lots worse, and frankly, I'm honored to be called Judge Bill Ferris. Uh, I take that as the ultimate compliment, but thank you. Um, good morning. This is a wonderful occasion for the city of Rocky Mount, and I don't mean just the governmental part of the city of Rocky Mount. I mean for all of our citizens. When I walked in here this morning, and I've been in here many times when it was Southern Bank, I uh, spoke to Amy and I asked her a couple of questions and one of them I asked do you and your staff pinch each other now just you know this is so unbelievable and such a vast improvement over the the uh, confined space that they were in for a number of years and she said absolutely and she said in the two days we've been here 
We've had nothing but positive feedback from our customers. Okay, you think, well, what's the big deal in that? The big deal is she used the word customers. Now think about government, attitude, and the word customers. They're usually not on the same, in the same book, much less the same statement. And that reflects a great attitude. Um, I well remember we were getting ready to relocate our dealership when DJ Rosenson was constructing the city hall now. And I remember those great big pilings that were going down and it was just these enormous hammers and these things that were tall in this building to help, you know, stabilize the foundation. And then DJ Rose built this. Um, they've been a rich part of the history of Rocky Mount and throughout the state. This building in and of itself is part of our history. And even though it's not an old facility as such, it's part of our legacy. It's part of downtown. It's a reason to celebrate. When the holdings who own both First Citizens or controlling interest in Southern Bank were looking to expand, Rocky Mount has been very good to Southern Bank, and Southern Bank has been a great partner and corporate citizen in Rocky Mount. The holdings came in and they visited all of Rocky Mount before they decided to expand here. And if Mike Bryant were able to be with us, he would be nodding his head north and south. They then decided they wanted to be part of downtown. And they wanted to be part of downtown before the event center issue was settled, before some of the property began to be sold and developed. It's a great belief that they had in our downtown. Now this is a great example of public and private partnership. Private being the bank, of course, public being the city of Rocky Mount. Their building downtown was one of the first new constructions by private in probably 40 or more years. The public part, this facility or an expansion obviously was needed by the city of Rocky Mount. That building was finished, I think, in maybe 83, 84, somewhere in that line. Um, technology, the growth, the demands of the city have all changed. And this was a great asset for the city and for then city manager Charles Penny and his city council to, to, uh, to acquire. And it was done at a price that you and I as taxpayers could afford. They had to build this building today, my guess is four, five, six times the cost of the acquisition from Southern Bank. So you had Southern Bank building a new facility on Church Street, redeveloping the facility behind, moving everything but the corporate office to Rocky Mount, and the city of Rocky Mount getting a great deal that will mean a great deal for all of us in this facility and for Amy and her staff. It also means a lot for our growth in the city. You know, the Carolinas Gateway Partnership along with the Chamber is recruiting anywhere from, you know, the one, the twos, the mom and pops to certainly the triangle tires and everything in between. When they come in a facility like this and the staff is energized and positive and not overly stressed out, it's another asset that Carolinas Gateway can sell and offer and the Rocky Mount Area Chamber of Commerce can sell and offer. It's a win-win, and we are so pleased to be part of today. We are so pleased to be part of the community, and we're so proud of our city for the vision in taking advantage of this facility opposed to leaving it vacant. And it, it, it's just a, a win-win for all of us, and I congratulate the city. I congratulate the staff, and Amy, best of luck to you and your staff here, and thank you all. This first area, of course, is our cashiering area, much more spacious, spacious. As you can see, more teller lines. We've got four, we've got six versus the four that we used to have. Drive through in the back, three different lanes to choose from. So much more efficient, much more spacious. They can work together. In the back area is where our vault is, and we've got a workroom. There's some storage back there because we keep any um, deposit tickets that you give to us, we store them for about a year in case we have to go back to them. And those are all in a secure area in the back. 
Now this room used to be the bank's deposit box, mm -hmm. um, and we're using it for some storage oh, at this okay. point. So that's not actually the vault, oh, but it's okay. got a great big door that looks like yes. one. Um, you'll also notice throughout the building, one of the things we did is we enhanced security. So you can see a camera that's right up there. It's actually capturing this whole area. There's cameras up behind the cashiers. And as you go through the building, you will see those, those cameras. Um, also to help us with security is that all the doors are badge access. So as we go through areas, you'll see me use my badge to get us into certain areas. And that, that, that helps for the safety of our staff as well. Um, so now we're going to move over into the customer service area. So let's go toward the balloons right over there toward the counter and I'll, I'll show you that area. All right, so this is customer service. This is our front desk. This is where you sign in to Smartline. It's in English and in Spanish, but you, you sign on to it. And what you'll see on this monitor up here on the wall, on the far wall, you'll see your name come up there with your estimated wait time. And as you wait, you can, you can see you move up in the position so you know exactly where you are. And as I mentioned, you know, if you're in a hurry, you can also look at home or from wherever you are, what the wait times are, or make an appointment, which is a great enhancement because we, we understand that people are busy and don't want to come and just, just wait. So I'm going to take you through the customer service waiting. You see waiting here. You'll see some on the other side as well. And then we'll stop over under that monitor. Here as you walk by, you can see the cameras. So our security guard can view what's going on inside and outside. <laughs> so I'm gonna take you down the hall, and if there's no one in one of these offices, we'll stop in there. But what I'd like for you to take a look at is the furniture in this building. What we did is we have refinished existing furniture. So we, there's only two desks that are in this building that we had to purchase. All the rest of the furniture, which looks new and nice, was refinished. So just take a look at that. I'm really proud of it. That room right there with the lock on it is also for our record storage. We had very little room, almost really no room for record storage where we were, so we would stack up boxes just in offices and hallways, so it's nice to have somewhere to securely store our records. So that's what that room is. This over here to the right is our conference room. Um, Southern Bank actually left those lovely pink chairs for us. And we, I know, I like them. And we have recycled um, that particular conference room. It came from City Hall. These are the collection offices up here. These are people who work in back office collection activities. And next, I'm going to take you through the call center. Now the call center's active, so they're working. So I'm going to tell you about it out here, and then we'll walk through and you can see it. But we're going to go in, and what you're going to see is there's a monitor up by the door, and that's the monitor. They can see what the call activity is. Also, the, the supervisor's office is off to the far side. She can see everyone, and if anyone needs help, or she can also monitor those calls. So you probably heard that static in there. That's not by accident. That's actually white noise for the call center. It's white noise. Okay. So it actually helps them. If you turn it off, they'll probably all look up and say, what just happened? Because it helps them to level their voice so that not one person is louder than the other. And it also helps to drown out everyone else who's talking around you. So those are features that you normally have in a call center. We didn't have it before, but we have it now. Took a minute wow. to get adjusted to it, but they really like it. This is our new training room, so I'll take you in here. The staff has pretty complicated technology that they use all around, so they needed a space that they can come together and constantly be trained, or there's occasions when they have to upgrade our software. So this is a, a nice place that we can keep them trained 
in the building without having to take them out of the building to other areas because it, we just need that efficiency of having them here. So this is a, a, a nice addition for us. This actually used to be the bank's boardroom. You can see there's a sign on the door that says boardroom, but that's what this was before. So we've actually done nothing in here other than move our equipment in. Um, thanks to Southern Bank, all the artwork that you see was actually left in the building. So we didn't buy any artwork. It, it actually came with the building. They left some pretty nice pieces. We're coming down to where the billing office is. So we've got billing down here in a quiet corner so they can generate the bills for you. They used to be in a space that's as big as probably that one office in the front. This is their area and again, they're centralized with us where they were decentralized. So they're seeing the benefit of being able to, to work together with the team. Now I'm going to take you into our break room. Now you notice this color is kind of bright, but this is our happy room. It's our happy. I like blue. I like blue. <laughs> Pay Menace is one of our vendors. They actually are the the vendor who helps with the online payments. You have to have a secure site for that, so they're the ones who do that, and they decided they would like to help us celebrate the opening of this building and send us some cookies and ducks. Oh, okay, I like that. Gold ducks. It is. Yes. Two ways, so, yep, there's one. One way is on the end, and the other way is that way. Yeah. And there's refrigerator magnets as well with our number on it. So you like it? Yeah. Well, we love it. Yeah. Wow. You guys we love it. I'm, I'm taking a job out here. And I think the bank used to, I think they must have had a chef. This thing like yeah, comes, down. comes down. So we don't have a chef, um, but okay. we got the benefit of their nice the kitchen. <laughs> This is our employees' entrance right here. Um, of course, we've, we've got some refreshments if they need them as they come and go. This is the back entrance of our field services group. There was a door on the other side, but these are other meter readers and people, technicians who work out in the field, so they can easily come right in the employee entrance and go right into their offices from here without having to go all the way through the lobby. Um, so it's very convenient for them. And again, that's a group that was not with us before. They were in a separate office. So it helps to have them here so we can all work together. All right, so we're going to go back out, and this is going to take you back to the lobby. Are there any questions? This is great. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you.